Hi everyone, welcome back to today's video. For today, we're going to be making this super cute little um, greeting card using one of the um, some stuff from one of the new suites in the Occasions catalog. I absolutely love this card. Um, if you are participating in my paper share, you may or may not be getting this card in uh, your little packet. So I just think it's super cute and it's really fast and easy to do. Um, so I absolutely love it. So let's go ahead and jump into what we're gonna be using for today. Um, the stamp set and framelits that we're gonna be using are, like I said, from the Occasions catalog and this is from the Tasty Treats suite. So we have the Cool Treats uh, stamp set and then the Frozen Treats framelits dies. These two coordinate together and they are a bundle in the new Occasions catalog. Absolutely cute adorable cute spectacular there is also some paper that coordinates with this suite which again if you're um, participating in my paper share you will be able to um you will be getting samples of that paper so super super cute love 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 that um for our ink we're going to be using uh crumb cake watermelon wonder and versamark and we are going to be using the clear embossing powder as well as the Bright's sequin assortment. So we'll be using just a couple of those. And then for our paper, we are going to be using, um, how many colors do we have here? Four different colors. So I have a little scrap of crumb cake and it doesn't have to be, um, very big. We're just going to be cutting out one tiny little thing. So I just have a scrap here. Um, as long as it's big enough to fit the framelit, that's all we need. I have a piece of Whisper White here, which is cut at two inches by five and a quarter. Again, just another scrap of, this is a Watermelon Wonder. I have a fuzzy. This is a piece of Pool Party that is cut at five and a quarter by four inches. And then I have a piece of Watermelon Wonder for our card base, which as usual is cut at eight and a half by five and a half. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so to start, I'm gonna go ahead and get our background piece all nice and ready to go. So we're gonna be using Versamark and we're going to be using these two stamps from the stamp set. So it's this like tall, long popsicle and then the little um, stick that goes with it. So I'm just going to take these two stamps and I'm going to take my verse mark and I'm going to stamp all over this background piece. Okay, so there's that. It doesn't need to be perfect. Um, you know, just do, do it however you want. Do it whatever you think is going to look the best. Um, I kind of use a couple different techniques as I'm doing this. Um, it really, it really just depends. Um, I would suggest trying to stamp both. So like your full popsicle around the same time. So you have a good idea of your placement because it can get a little tricky, um, trying to place all of your popsicles if you don't know exactly where they're all going to end up because they are two separate pieces. Hopefully that made sense. I'm not sure that it did though. <laughs> so I'm actually going to scoot that off to the side and fold my piece of paper in half. This is just a background piece that I was using to stamp off on, but now we're going to emboss. So I'm going to put our piece of paper or background piece on here. And for this, um, you do wanna make sure that you um, stamp in pretty much the entire piece because um, if you remember from the sample that I showed you at the beginning of the video, you will, you do end up seeing quite a bit of this background piece. So you do want to make sure, sometimes we do background pieces and I, I, you know, I tell you guys, you don't have to be super concerned about making sure that the whole thing is filled up or that it looks perfect because a lot of it gets covered up. This one, we're actually leaving a lot of it uncovered. So I would suggest being a little bit more conscious. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. It, it is still the background piece and part of it is going to get covered up. Um, and I think imperfections are what makes card making so wonderful. But anyways, without getting too much into that, <laughs> um, just make sure that you are filling up the entire thing because you will see a lot of the background piece. So I'm going to go ahead and I put my clear embossing powder on there. I was talking through the whole thing, so imagine that. <laughs> um, but I went ahead and put the clear embossing powder on and I'm just gonna take my heat, to my heat tool now and go ahead and heat set this. Okay. 
Okay, so now that our little background piece is done, I'm going to take this and set it off to the side. And I'm going to grab our little scraps here. So again, this is a scrap of Watermelon Wonder. And this is a scrap of crumb cake. And I'm going to grab my framelits. And I don't have these on my magnetic sheets yet. I've been slacking. So I'm going to grab the little swirly guy. I don't know what exactly you call that. But the one <laughs> little swirl. Ice cream squirrel ice cream swirl and then I'm gonna grab the little cone that has the uh, checkered pattern in it that looks like a little ice cream so there are actually two that are very similar here let's see if I can pull this one so there's one that the check pattern is very prominent and then there's another one where it's really more into the uh, framelit this one is going to cut out the raised part. The highest raised part is on the outside. So this one is going to cut out the ice cream or the cone shape and then emboss in the middle. This one, the checkered pattern is all highly raised. So this is actually going to cut out the checkered pattern for your cone. So that's the difference between the two. I'm gonna use the one that's going to cut out the shape and then emboss a little bit. If you got the, um, oh, what is it? The weather together, the framelits that go with that. There's a couple of framelits in there that uh, do the exact same thing. Same concept at least. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these and bring in my Big Shot. And I'm going to cut these out just like so. So put those on there, dun, 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 crank it through. Now we are going to be stamping on the little uh, Watermelon Wonder, the swirl piece, but I find that with this uh, set or this die and uh, stamp at least, that it is easier to cut it out first and then stamp than it is to do it the other way. Normally I would stamp and then take my framelit and cut out around my stamped area. But I find that with this one, I just get a better result or a result that I like more when I cut it out first and then stamp on it. So you get a little cone that looks like this and I don't know how well you'll actually be able to see this and I don't even know if I'm in frame to be honest, but, um, it has the embossed impression of a little waffle cone. Super cute. So I'm gonna set that off to the side. And then we have our little swirl here. So I'm going to grab my Watermelon Wonder ink. And there is this little swirly patterned uh, stamp that's in the set. I'm gonna ink this up with Watermelon Wonder and I'm going to try to place it on here as best as I can. Let's see if I did a good job. Hey, that's not too bad. I try not to lean too far forward so that I don't get my head in the camera. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. That one was not bad. So that just gives it a little extra texture and it looks super cute. So what I'm gonna do now is grab my piece of Whisper White and my little cone that I just threw. And I'm going to take some regular adhesive, um, and I'm going to flip my cone. Oops, actually, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to flip my little swirl over. And I'm going to just run a little bit of adhesive right at the bottom. And then I'm going to take my cone and you want to make sure that the embossed side is down. And just stick it down. Whoops. Stick it down just like that. And it just basically makes a little bit of contact to keep those two together. I'm going to keep that flipped upside down and I'm going to grab some dimensionals. And you only need like two for this. So pop a couple of these on here, take the backing off, and then we're gonna put this onto our little white piece. Now, I want this to be towards the top, but not all the way up to the top, touching the top of our piece of Whisper White. So right there is good. That's about where I have it. Then we're going to do our sentiment. I'm going to bring in my crumb cake ink and there are two stamps in this set. One says your and the other says sweet. And I'm going to take the your stamp and I'm going to ink this up in crumb cake. And I'm going to stamp it right under our little ice cream just like so. I'm going to grab my watermelon wonder again and we're going to do sweet in watermelon wonder right under the your so it says your sweet 
So stinking cute. Absolutely love it. And that's all the stamping that we're doing for this card. So now it's just time to put the finishing details on it and stick it all together. So I'm going to grab my uh, fine tip glue pen and my sequins. And I'm going to fish out three, whoa, I'm throwing them at myself. I'm gonna fish out three of the pink little circle sequins. And I can see them, so I just need to be able to pick them up and put them in my little lid. Come on, buddy. You're right there, okay. Is that? Yes, okay, that's a pink one. The red and the pink look so similar. Um, okay, so I'm gonna set that off to the side so I don't knock it over. <laughs> and I'm going to use my fine tip glue pen and I'm just going to uh, use it to put these down. So I think I'm gonna do one right about here and I just put a little bit of glue on there. I pick up the sequin and just kind of drop it down and then I just very gently press the sequin on both sides to kind of get the glue up in there. Um, I don't know, I find that it works pretty well. And using the fine tip glue pen, you could use glue dots. I know a lot of people like to use glue dots to adhere sequins. I find that the fine tip glue pen really keeps them on there super strong. I have never really had um, a sequin fall off when I use the fine tip glue pen. So that's why I kind of use it. But you will use whatever you have, use what you like. And there's no right or wrong way to do it. Um, and there's no right or wrong placement for them amount. I'm just using three and you guys can kind of see where I'm putting them. Um, I'm trying to get the needle back into my fine tip glue so it doesn't close up. Um, this is kind of where I put mine, but you could put yours wherever you please. I, I, like I said, there's really no right or wrong way to do it. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to set this off to the side so that our uh, glue can start drying and I'm going to bring in our card base and our background piece. I'm gonna go ahead and fold my card base in half. Just like this. And I'm actually going to be using um, our Fast Fuse to put this piece down just because it is uh, embossed. And sometimes when you use so much embossing powder, it uh, warps the piece a little bit. So I don't want this to come up at all. So I'm just gonna be using Fast Fuse so that I make sure that it sticks down really well. And then you just can figure out what, what orientation you want the piece to go and stick that down just like so. Hoping our little sequins are dry by now. Nope, they're not dry. So I'm just going to wait a couple more seconds for those to dry. Okay, so I think we're all drying now and I'm just going to flip this over. I'm gonna use regular adhesive. Um, I don't know, I switch back and forth depending on what I'm doing. Use what you have though, I don't, I don't know. I'm just particular like that, I guess, I don't know. Um, so I just put some regular adhesive on the back and then I'm just going to center this up from left to right and stick it down. And that's our little sweet card for today. So I really hope you guys enjoy. I cannot wait to show you guys some more projects using this stuff out of the occasions catalog. I just, it's absolutely amazing. So just a few more days until the catalog's live and you can start getting your hands on these goodies as well. Um, if you still need a catalog, make sure you head over to my website, littlemooncreation.com and use the contact me form or you can email me directly at littlemooncreation at gmail.com. Um, and as always, if you wanna go and shop Stampin' Up! product that we have, um, active right now, you can always head over to littlemooncreation.stampinup.net and shop there 24 seven. So hopefully you guys enjoy. Also, if you are interested in my paper share still, there's still about a week left that I will be keeping that open. Um, the first few people that ordered, I actually had some pa some stuff already packaged up on hand. So um, a few orders have actually already gone out, which was super fun. And um, I'm still taking orders through next week. So if you're interested in that, make sure you head over to my Etsy store. All of the links will be down below. Make sure you head over and get your hands on that. It's only $12 for over 90 sheets of, not 90, whew, not 90. It's only $12 for over 50 sheets of paper, I think. I don't even remember off the top of my head right now, but it's a lot of paper for not a lot of money. So make sure you head over and check that out if you're interested. Um, and I guess I will just see you guys in my next video. Bye.